I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a copy of my head. So this is actually not a copy of my head, this is just a styrofoam head that I was going to use to make a prop helmet. I was hanging out with my buddy Bill Duran from Punish Props and he said, no, we have to life cast your head so that the helmet is an exact fit. So in all honesty, in this video, I'm actually not doing anything except sitting still. All of the work here is Bill Duran and his friends, so let's get to it. First, Bill covered my hair with a bald cap, trimmed it to size, and then used some spirit gum to glue it down. He was really clear to say not to use a latex cap here because it interferes with the silicone curing up correctly. For the silicone, they used Body Double by Smooth On. This is made specifically for people with facial hair, so it didn't pull my beard out. They mixed up several cups of the individual parts to have them ready because each one of these mixtures sets up in about five minutes. They made a pretty thick bead of this on my shoulders where they wanted the bottom of the mold to be and then they started packing it in behind my ears, made sure to squish it in with the tongue depressors to fill all of the small gaps. Then they started sticking it in my ears. This was a little weird but you could actually still hear through it, everything was just a little bit muffled. They just spread out this first batch of silicone and just made a thin covering over the top of my head. They had to work in small batches because it did set up so quickly. So when they finished one canister, they would mix up two more small cups and then add it on. I couldn't hear everything that Bill was saying, but it seemed to me that they were putting a thin covering over all the different parts of my head and then they would go back and fill it in and make it thicker where it needed to have some support. Specifically around my ears, underneath my chin, around my nose and my eyes, they thickened it up so when they pulled the mold off of my head, it had plenty of strength. Bill was really adamant about being the only one that worked around my nose to make sure that it was fully clear the whole time. He was really awesome in that way and I wasn't scared about not being able to breathe or anything. I had no trouble. Really it was just sitting still for an hour that was a little bit odd. It was really interesting to try to keep my lips and the rest of my face in a resting state for that long and I found that if I actually tried to swallow it was a little bit hard because I'm used to moving my jaw. It wasn't a big deal I just had to adjust as we were going along. At this point everything was covered but they added a few more layers just to reinforce the whole mold and make it nice and sturdy. Once it was fully cured then they wanted to wrap it with a hard shell so it would hold its shape when we went to make a cast. To do this they used some plaster strips. These come in sheets and they cut them down to thinner strips and then they dipped them in a big bucket of water. They pulled off some of the extra water to make sure that they didn't drip everywhere and then Bill started making a seam down the middle of my head. This is the area where the front and the back parts of the mold will overlay. It needs to be thick so that they can be screwed together and so that it'll just hold the structure of my head. He pushed these in to make sure that they filled all the nooks and crannies to support the inner mold. We had some help from the 3D printing nerd, Joel Telling. He's awesome, he's linked down in the description, go check him out. We also had Bendy Smalls on hand to help with the entire process, but actually didn't get her face on camera. Go check her out, I'll have a link in the description as well. They covered the entire backside of my head with the plaster, and once it was starting to set up, Bill went over the seam area with some Vaseline. This just adds a layer of separation between the back part of the plaster mold and the front part. Having those joined together on my head would be pretty bad. He put this on and then laid on some wet paper towel. He made the point that you could use either the Vaseline or the paper towel method, but doing them both is even better. Then they started on the front side of the mold. This process was pretty much the same. He started with the seam and built it up so it was nice and thick, but then moved on to around my nose and my mouth. Those parts are where the silicone is a little bit thinner and it needs more reinforcement. He cut down some smaller strips of this stuff and put it over my nose, over my cheeks, and on my upper lip just to give it some extra strength. Again, he made sure to keep my nose clear so that I could breathe and he was talking to me the whole time reassuring me that he was watching out for that. They finished covering the rest of the front and then really packed it in in those areas around my nose and underneath my chin to make sure that it was nice and solid. Once all the area was covered, they dug some of the plaster out of the bottom of the bucket and then used it to fill in the gaps and really force some of the seams together. The plaster took a few minutes to set up, but it really wasn't very long. After it was done, Bill used a tool to separate the front portion of the mold from the back. He didn't want to crack it, but once he got the front piece off, the back came off pretty easily. Then it was a matter of getting the silicone off, and to do this, he used some safety scissors and cut a seam up the back. You can notice that he's cutting in a zigzag pattern, and this helps the mold go back together in the correct orientation once we go to make a cast of it. I have to say I was pretty relieved to get this thing off my face and that my beard didn't go with it, although we did see a couple of hairs stuck in there. Bill wanted to make a quick cast so we could see how the mold came out. 
He realigned the outside parts of the mold and then drove in some screws to hold them together. He just put these screws in just enough to hold the two pieces together without going all the way through and into the silicone part. Then he made sure to push the silicone out in to fill the void so that the nose and the eyes and everything were pushed all the way out and the shape would come out correctly. You can see there's a huge amount of detail on the inside of this mold. He shoved some small pieces of clay up into the nostrils and then reinforced the outside to keep it in place. This just makes sure that none of the casting material leaks out. For this quick cast, he used X30, and it's an expanding foam. In the long run, it's not the thing that you would want to use as your final casting, but it only took about an hour to set up, and all you have to do is mix the parts one to one. First, he poured it around the top edge, and this lets it run down all the faces and just helps it get in the nooks and crannies around the top. There's a lot of areas that need to be filled, like the nose and the ears and all that stuff, so he spun the mold around and tried to get it to drop down into all these areas. This stuff's already kind of thick and it starts to set up quickly, so it doesn't necessarily drop into all the detail, but this is a quick cast. He just set it in a bucket with the opening facing upward. That way when it expanded, it went in the right direction. We were a little worried that it was gonna spill over the side, but by the time it got to this point, the top had already started to set up and it was kind of rigid, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. We just let it go. After it was finished expanding, it took a little bit longer to fully cure, and then he just pulled it out of the mold, basically by reversing the process. He just took out the stuff from the nose, pulled out the screws, separated the outer mold, and then had to peel off the silicone from the foam. The silicone is really thick, but you still have to be careful not to tear it, especially when pulling it around things like the chin or in the areas where it's open, like around the nose. It was a little strange to see myself as a disembodied head, but I was really happy with how this thing came out. It was also really funny to watch Bill pick clay boogers out of my nose. We looked over the cast and found that the foam didn't fully expand into some of the details, but a different material would work just fine. We also found a few of my beard hairs that had transferred through the mold into the casting. That was pretty funny. Here's a quick time lapse of the entire process so you can see the whole thing start to finish from one point of view. I will say that I was a little bit apprehensive of doing this in the first place, but Bill is awesome and super good at what he does, and so I really trusted him, and it ended up not being bad at all. In fact, I'm kind of surprised I didn't fall asleep during this process. After I left Bill's house, he put the mold in the mail. It's not here yet, so unfortunately I don't have it to make a final casting, but I'll do that soon, probably on my live stream on Twitch. Huge thanks to Bill Duran and his wife Brittany who shot most of this video, as well as everybody else who was there to help out. I hope you liked this one, I hope you learned something. If you're interested in more life casting videos, I know there are a couple of really good ones on testa.com. I'll try to link those down in the description, as well as everybody that helped out for this particular video. I've got lots of other videos, you can check those out here, and don't forget to subscribe Subscribe. And if you want to support these videos, Patreon is the best way to do that. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.